<laughs> I've never got a uh, uh, opening like that. So I liked it. <laughs> So my name is Niall Flores. I run blondish.net. Uh, I do a lot of stuff, everything she says. Uh, thank God I didn't have like all the dirty laundry too. Um, so you can follow me on Twitter, blondishnet. If you're in this room and you follow me on Twitter, say hello. There's so many followers. Um, if you're ever going to interact to me, that's the first thing you should be doing to people. Hi, hello, I followed you. I like what you were doing and everything else. So uh, I encourage you to do that. Um, other than doing all this other stuff, I'm actually an active part of the work, uh, WordPress community in St. Louis. I'm actually on the organization team for WordCamp St. Louis, which is uh, May 14th and 15th. And uh, I'm not going to go and spam you even further. <laughs> so let's uh, get into this. Um, I'm doing Click This, Subscribe Today, All About Calls to Action. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> so the objective of my topic is to discuss what a call to action is, share tips on creating great call to action, and share some cool resources to test them so you can get the most out of your calls to action. My bottom line is hopefully at the end of this, you'll think, be thinking further on what you can do with your current website so you can make money. What is a call to action? A call to action is designed to catch the audience attention and persuade them to respond to it. It gets them to do something. This is something like uh, people don't, a lot of people that I found when I talk to them, they don't understand. What are you talking about? It's the same thing when people tell me, I don't understand this thing you say when you tell me I need to engage with my followers. Okay, so if you're trying to get them to do something, so you have to talk to them. You have to, you have to do something in order to get something back from them. The big problem is that most people either don't know how to get people to do something or understand how to, to market to their visitors. In fact, um, some disturbing stuff. And while it is a 2013, it's still, per, it's still as scary today. 56% um, of uh, B2B small businesses websites don't use a meta description that show up in search results and help, could help draw visitors into the website. So when you're, say, how many of you are Yoast SEO users or even all-in-one SEO users? So when you have your tool, to do, edit the meta description for your article, you should be utilizing that. Make it, make it actionable. So why should I, when I'm searching on Google, go to you versus some other person had some, you know, it had the exact same title and looked like it was what you wanted? Well, what if you had the meta description that was more enticing to find out why, you know, Okay, I'm gonna find out why. I'm curious, why, why, what do I gotta find out? So make it enticing. 87% don't do anything to make their contact us options stand up, out. If anything, you should have a contact page on your site. Now I know the bottom one, 68% do not show an email address on the homepage. I usually don't believe on that. At least if you have a one page or have a form on it. So you can keep, your, keep yourself from getting spammed by a bunch of bots who just, just uh, took off with your email address. And then uh, another one is 82% don't even bother to list their social media profiles. You're trying to engage people outside of your website too. And I know what kind of thing is at backwards, but if they're using Facebook more than anything and you're pressing content to them, you're still end up Okay, so they're using Facebook all the time and you're pushing content out to them. That means you're bringing them back to your website. So maybe they should follow your fan page or if you're just a person and you prefer to have your personal profile for whatever reason and you do, you're very good at using their privacy settings. Put your Facebook 
candle on your page. So the biggest thing is ROI is the name of the game, your return on investment. So I don't care if your site is the most awesome or the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. If uh, you can't get people to do any of these things, then your website is broken. Again, even if you're a blogger, how many of you are bloggers in here? And that's strictly what, what you do. You, sometimes you do affiliate marketing, product reviews, and everything else. You want people to get to do something. You want them to su subscribe to your newsletter. If, if anything else, if you don't want, care about Google ads or anything else, you want to keep them coming back to your website. Get them on your newsletter. So um, Neil Patel uh, keeps coming up, uh, I see, uh, in the last one. He actually has a really, he's got a lot of properties out there that are, are concerned on getting you to get more traffic to your website. And so his website is, is quicksprout.com, and he says, good things happen when you create killer calls to action. I would even argue that your website can't be successful unless you produ produce great calls to action. I believe this too. When he popped up years ago, I had just went from a hobby blogger to starting a business. And this, this gentleman, this is all he was focused on. You know, tr proving all these results like, if you do this, will this get you money? Will this get you a subscriber? Um, if, if anything else, this gentleman is a very smart man and you should be following him. Before planning your CTAs, which are call to actions, before we get all confused, what's a CTA? You must know the purpose of your website and your business. If you don't know, discuss it with somebody like a, a business consultant or a coach to get down to exactly who you are and what you need ha to happen, what you need people to do on your website. And uh, of course, also go even further, not just know what to do, but prioritize those. What, what, sh what should they be doing first and then next? So example and results from a call to action. Um, the reason why I give a list is because some people really don't know exactly what the, all they can do. I mean, this is just a few things. But subscribe to a newsletter. Get a service quote. Some of you don't want to have like a package on your website, but you can give them a form so they can give you, a, uh, say, this is my website that I want to do. I need this and this and this done. Give me a quote. So take up a discount or promotional offer. Encourage people to comment. You could do this in your, in your blog toward the bottom. Getting, and there's a really good method to do that. Test a product demo. Get blog visitors to share blog posts. And fill, just fill out a form. So some of the traits of a good call to action, it's strong verb. Good copy that's easy to understand and read. Strategic placement. Uh, you was mentioned by Sarah previously above the fold. That's really nice, especially on your front page. If you can do that, uh, a lot of the trending design right now is to put this, you have your menu bar at the top and this big giant image or something like that. And if you don't have anything on it, how do people know who you are and what you're offering? So like they'll scroll, might, they might scroll down, but they might get confused. The majority of people that when I visit their website, I don't even know what they're trying to sell me. I don't even know who they are or their business. Color, it does, now, while it does matter, sometimes it really doesn't matter. And I'll explain that. Um, creates urgent, sense of urgency. Some people really need to be told buy now, click now. Click this now, subscribe now, subscribe today. 
reduces the risk. So if you have something out there like that's proven, like a study that's proven, and it's an ebook format and it's free, and you put on your call to action 12 proven uh, calls to action um, that will work for your website, and it's by somebody that you've trusted. Well, if they're proven, you're going to go get that. You're going to go and subscribe to that newsletter and download that ebook. Um, also, if it's easy to, easy to sign up. <laughs> and so the big thing is uh, strong verbs. Basically, you don't want to have a passive voice about it. You don't want to say, uh, here is my product. Uh, hopefully, you will uh, subscribe. And, and yeah, you could say subscribe, but it creates no sense of urgency. You want to say subscribe now, subscribe today. So stuff like buy now, subscribe now, uh, now learn more, order today, sign up for a free trial membership, send me my whatever it might be now, get your free whatever it is now, Try it, try it free for a limited time and maybe 30 days. Um, one of the ones on here that doesn't do well actually is the sign me up for weekly emails. So, exactly, and that was my case of the passive voice. It doesn't create a sense of urgency. It doesn't tell me Sign me up for weekly emails. You could say, don't miss out. Subscribe today. How, how more effective and is that? It's how more powerful. Like, oh, God, I, got, I, I better not miss out. I better su subscribe today. So I said I would explain this a little bit. And the reason why is there are, there are it's kind of like sliders. There are people who really damn it. And I'm one of the people that I do not believe in them. They're a big old black hole on, a peop on people's website. They're also a distraction. And mostly due to the fact that nobody knows how to slow those things down. And also, they don't know how to effectively use them because they're supposed to be used to do something. Now I can see if you're a photographer and you're trying to show off your photos. That's one thing. We understand if you clearly make, make yourself a photo uh, or photographer and, that it, and you tell people that but you have this slider on it showcasing your work. That's one thing. But if say you're in marketing and you have this slider and you're just putting all these images up that have no text that tell you get your free ebook today or subscribe to the newsletter or watch me on you know CNN for my interview with blah 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 today something like that um, I've had a, a client that she was doing interviews with on in a, you know MSNBC and and CNN and for marketing and she on her website prior to that her slider was very ineffective it was just pictures it didn't have any text on it and the one that did just didn't have anything like you know you know watch me tonight on CNN or something like that and she could have really gotten more people to look like her own followers like oh my god we gotta see her tonight so on this, um, one of the thing, other things is colors. Uh, red, green, orange, yellow. Um, as you can see, uh, both of these say, basically say that it's no best color for conversions. The, it's, you really have, to, and there's a reason why. Buttons should be one of the larger ones on a page, but doesn't overpower your design. Should utilize colors that contrast and or are brighter. You heard that from Sarah. 
and you have more if you have more than one button you should prioritize it by giving a stronger verb and design so like some people they say uh, even if it's like those ones out there that say no thanks and then they have another one and you really want to make the one for them to subscribe to much more brighter and noticeable and while the other ones kind of plain and everything and sometimes people think that's a distraction but that's really like you know I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this instead of click no thanks visual ex uh, examples of strong calls to action uh, 12 pro proven ways to convert abandoning visitors into subscribers this is actually on the Optin Monster site by Syed Balki and his team. And uh, he is one of those, uh, his plugin is, is for helping you put on, an opt-in on your website. Then he has many different types of opt-ins that you can put on there. You can put one of the traditional pop-ups, an exit intent pop-up. You can do a full page pop-up, sidebar opt-in. Be below the post opt-in there's so many different ways that you can gain subscribers that through that plugin and he's actually gone in and studied this put an ebook together and this is what he does to entice his people to subscribe at least I mean he's not even he's not even asking you to buy the product yet he's just saying hey get this free ebook and of course you see it says download now. Crazy Egg is another one. Um, they are, they have this interesting heat map and I kind of like it. Uh, where you go and you, you put your website in there and it'll show you a heat map. And so you can see where your visitors are going on your site. And Basically, it's asking you a question first. It's kind of getting you to think. And then it's telling you, show me my heat map. Like, it's already available to you. All you have to do is put the, the website URL in, and it's done. That's easy. This one's on Quick Sprout. Um, this is actually his front page. And... Uh, so basically he's telling you that that's what they're dedicated to is making you uh, better content so your audience and traffic can grow. And then you, based on their tools, you can hook it up with your URL and log in with Google, sync it with Google, and it'll show you all the results to make your, your content better. So they're giving you all these suggestions like, maybe I should be doing this. And of course, he, he's a thing, he has this thing with green. So on his website, it's part of his brand anyway. And, it's, and so the thing with this is he's gone with the darker green on top of the other green. So the thing after you've put your call to actions, be on top of how it performs. You should experiment and pay attention to what is working and what's not working. If it is not working, as soon as you know this, get rid of it. If you want to, you can test more. You try A-B testing. So what is A-B testing? Uh, I actually like the definition better from this uh, lady. Um, she's part of the team called Ingot. And it's a plug-in for A-B conversion for WordPress, A-B testing for WordPress. And so basically, uh, imagine you're on Amazon.com before the one-click buy button. You're considering the idea, but you don't know how your customers will react. So you run an A-B test. <laughs> half of your customers see a buy now button, and half of your customers see the one-click buy button. An A-B test collects the number of impressions versus conversions to shed light upon how your customers react to your po idea of possibilities. So you could, with A-B testing, you could do more than one. You could do several, and it will toss all these suggestions at people and gather the data on what is actually working. 
and deliver, you can choose to deliver that one that did the best. And if none of them did really well, you're like, oh, let me throw something else in the mix. You could do that too. You take one out, put something in, else in. So some of the tools out there, um, I actually put some paid up here and the, most, the reason why is, and I discussed this with some of my marketing friends, is because some of the free testers out there don't consider bots. So if they're hitting your website, sometimes the bad bots will click on it. And so it'll register that instead of filter it out. So sometimes investing or using their trial offer for a month and seeing how that does, it may not work very well if you are like a really small site that's brand new. But if you do have regular traffic, it could be a handy tool to tr at least try out and see if it works for you. They are really not that cheap, but honestly, I, I like them. I actually have used Kissmatrix before, so. And that's a Neil Patel product as well. So the one I was actually talking about, Ingot, it is really simple. You install it, you set up several tests for your call to action, and you run the test on your site for a few weeks, and it will deliver the best result to your visitors. Uh, one of the guys that did this plugin, he's actually here, it's uh, Josh Pollock. And uh, the, they do have a free version, and then they have paid versions for support for it. So you can actually try it out on your website. So you make this call to action in their plugin. And so you label it, and then what it'll do, it'll give you the shortcut code like for text, if you want to replace like a specific text. And it'll deliver like, for example, this one has three different ones. And it will deliver, rotate and deliver those results and see which ones are collected. And if you go to his website, you can actually, there's a video on there that is really good. I think that was the selling point when I saw it. It's really easy to set up. Another one, um, OptinMonster, actually has some A-B testing in it. You can actually add uh, variations for your lead capture forms. Uh, so there's an example back there that, uh, OptiMonster had, like say the free ebook offer, there's an actual symbol in here for variation and you could create another one that looks exactly the same and they design, the design is built in there. So you get exact same design, different text or maybe colors and you can deliver that one instead and see how that goes. And it, that for them, they actually collect the information right there on their website rather on your website. So it's a little, it's a SAS. So it's less, I think it's less hindrance. At least for me, I use it. I think it's less hindrance on my website in, in regards to site speed. If you're actually more interested in a lot of the website conversion and traffic and SEO, a lot of these are the sites that you want to go to. Uh, Unbounce, Conversion XL, Kissmetrics, Crazy Egg, Quick Sprout, Moz, and the HubSpot blog. HubSpot uh, actually has a lot of marketing, Moz, a little bit of everything, mostly a, a lot of SEO. I just, I, I'm really crazy about that. And uh, Quick Sprout appeals to me because of the blogging and everything. They really get you to think about your content in, in a different way so you can get more traffic to it. Um, crazy Egg heat map so you can see how your visitors are behaving. Kiss metrics same. Conversion and unbounce are the same way too. So do I have qu room for questions? Yeah. Any questions?
All right, I guess I'm done. <laughs>